All right, just thought I'd do a little video response to this uh, little heretic, Jack Smack 77 and his four minute and 36 second little ranting, demonic ranting against the scriptural doctrine of repentance to salvation. You see, this is what these easy believers and heretics, they go into these little demonic frenzies when you talk about godly sorrow over sin, when you talk about, you know, humbling yourself before God. Because the easy believers, heretics are self-righteous and they just want to believe and and just continue living in their sin. Now, what Jack Smack 77 does, because I used to be an easy believers and heretic. When I was a false convert, when I was part of the whole Stephen Anderson camp, I used to be an easy believers and heretic. So I know all the little arguments and all the little, you know, word games they like to play to deny biblical repentance. They'll say things like, well, how many sins do you have to repent of? Or, or uh, repentance, you, what, do you have to stop sinning to be saved? I know all the arguments. Or they like to, one of their favorite arguments is they'll say, well, God repented in the Bible, so was God repenting of sin? I know that because I used to make those arguments myself when I was a false convert. And then I eventually got into atheism, then got truly born again. But basically, what these people do is they, they want to deny any kind of godly sorrow over sin. They want to just say, oh, I, just an intellectual belief and that's it. You know? Now, repentance of sins, you see, this is what Jack Smack 7 7 doesn't tell you. Repentance of sins is not you having to stop sinning. Biblical repentance of sins. And any true Bible-believing teacher uh, does not teach that repentance of sins is you stopping your sin to be saved. Okay, that's a heresy. Okay, that is false. That is a false gospel. Okay, you can't stop sinning to be saved. That is works. Okay, Jonah chapter three verse number ten shows that turning from sinful actions is a work. Okay, when people like me, when I say repentance of sins, I'm saying you have godly sorrow over your sins. You're having God the sorrow for your sins, that's what repenting of sins is in the context of salvation. Then after salvation, you turn from your sins. Okay? But Jack Smack 7-7 won't tell his viewers that. He just makes it seem like all people who say repent of your sins are like the Lordship Salvation heretics like Jesse Morell, Reuben Israel, uh, Watchman D, Kerrigan Skelly, uh, Richard Pankowski, yes I do name names. Um, those guys, those bunch, they do teach that repentance is you having to stop sinning. That is a heresy, okay? They're they're heretics. They're on their way to hell. They're they're trusting in their self righteousness to be saved. Like Romans ten three says, they're trying to establish their own righteousness rather than submit themselves to the righteousness of God. Okay? I'm not with those guys. Biblical repentance is godly sorrow. And that's what this heretic Jack Smack Seven Seven doesn't understand. Because you have a false dichotomy. You have the self-righteous, works-righteous, lordship heretics on one side, the lordship salvation heretics on one side, like Richard Pankowski, uh, Watchman D, Kerrigan Skelly, Ruben Israel, Jesse Amaral, that bunch. Then the other side, you have the no repentance, uh, antinomian, just no uh, change life, just easy believers and heretics like Jack Smack 77, Stephen Anderson, and these other guys. Okay? Ridiculous, but I'm gonna show you this little form and it just watch how angry he gets. It's ridiculous And obviously you should have righteous anger. I, I'm not denying that. Okay, but he just goes in a little demonic ranting uh, Just ridiculous and he just Throwing out just being very a little immature a little kid. That's all he is. I mean He's probably older than I am. He sounds like he's older than I am, but he just behaves like a little child and it's ridiculous But I'm gonna respond to this Okay, this sermon is entitled anyone who teaches that you have to repent of your sins to be saved is going to hell. I'd like to open up with prayer and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear. Well, I guess Paul was going to hell then. Okay, 2 Corinthians 7, 8 to 11. I'm going to show you that. So he just condemned Paul to hell right now. I'm going to prove that. The word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 101 reads. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee. O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. When wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that... Interesting. I'll set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I did a video a while back showing that Jack Smack 77 plays Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto, a violent game that's about basically stealing cars, killing people, uh, just super hyper violent game. So what are you doing setting wicked things before your eyes? I mean, I did a video showing, in my video showing that Jack Smack 77 playing Grand Theft Auto, doing a gameplay on his channel of him killing police officers. You know, setting wicked things before your eyes. I showed the game is rated 18 plus for, it was like alcohol, uh, nudity, sexual violence. 
You see, this is what easy believers and heretics do. They'll they'll preach against sin, but then they're doing the same thing. You know, he's saying wicked things for his eyes. And this is another thing too, when you don't believe in spiritual regeneration, there's no changed life, you haven't experienced the new birth, then you know, what's the problem with playing I mean I, I, I fear God. I don't, I don't want to play a game like Grand Theft Auto. I fear God too much to, to set something wicked like that for my eyes. It's disgusting. I've seen gameplays of that, and it's just super hyper-violent, just wicked. But, but, but he's playing it, and he'll condemn you if you try to point out his sin. Ridiculous. Turn aside, it shall not leave to me. Now, there are lots of false prophets out there that teach that you have to repent of your sins in order to be saved. And anyone who's always believed that is unsaved, they're not born again, they're unregenerate, and they're going straight to hell when they die. Well, I guess Paul is in hell then. I'm going to prove that to you. Paul preached repentance of sins. So he's, he's condemning Paul. Because number one, repenting of your sins is not trusting Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ paid for all your sins. He died, was buried, and rose again, and he completely paid for our salvation. The Bible records in John chapter 19 that it is finished. Our salvation is done. It's complete. It's finished. Uh, your hypocrisy is starting to show, Jackson, Acts 7, 7, because he is saying that, you, that if, you, if you can't base your gospel off one verse, John three sixteen, then it's a false gospel. So what are you doing running to a verse other than John three sixteen? Look out. Your hypocrisy is showing in what Christ did. And if you think that you have to repent of your sins, you have rejected the finished work of the cross, and you're trying to pay for your own sins. And you're going straight to hell, according to Romans chapter 4. Okay? Nobody is going to heaven if they think... So coming to God in sorrow, knowing that you're a sinner, is you trying to earn your salvation, according to this nut, this heretic. Ridiculous. They have to repent of their sins. Okay, the Bible, just watch, watch this, just the demonic ranting he goes into. It does talk about repenting. Okay, repent and believe the gospel, it says in Mark chapter 1. But that's talking about repenting of your dead works, repenting of your religion, repenting of your false gospel, and then believing the gospel. You know, putting your trust in Jesus Christ. <laughs> repenting of your dead works. Uh, yeah, coming to the end of your self-righteousness and realizing I'm not a good person. That's what repentance is. He, he, he just, he just, he's condemning himself, quite frankly. He just condemned himself. He just said biblical repentance is part of salvation, but then he's saying it's not part of salvation. Biblical repentance. You come to the end of yourself realizing, I'm not a good person. I can't earn my salvation. God, please save me. Ridiculous. It, it, it just, he can't, he just can't see his own hypocrisy. Alone for salvation. The Bible never says repent of your sins, meaning that you have to stop sinning. You have to turn from your sins. Now, see, that's, that's the lie he says. He, he makes it seem like anyone who says repent of your sins is the lordship salvation heretics who do teach you have to stop sinning to be saved, okay? Like I said, that is a heresy. I don't believe you have to stop sinning to be saved, okay? Repenting of sins is God the sorrow for your sins. It's not the same thing, okay? Uh, again, Jonah 3.10 does show that obedience and turning from sin is work. Works, okay? It is done after salvation. But repenting of sins in the context of salvation is biblical. Okay, I'm going to show you that. Repenting of sins, again, is not the same thing as you having to stop sinning, but he doesn't understand that. He's lying to his viewers and making it seem like anyone who says repent of your sins is teaching works and saying you have to basically stop sinning and live, obe live an obedient life to be saved. No, obedience comes after your salvation. It's part of spiritual regeneration, which this heretic, Jack Smack 7 7, has not experienced. That's why he's still playing a wicked game like Grand Theft Auto. You have to abnegate from a sinful lifestyle. That's works salvation and if you're trusting in your works you will not be saved galatians chapter 2 let's take a look at verse 16 and it reads it says knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of jesus christ even we have believed in jesus christ that we might be justified by the faith of christ and not by the works of the law for by the works Again, of the law i thought he said that you should only have to go to john 3 16 what are you doing going to other verses Again, your hypocrisy is showing, Jack Smack. How shall no flesh be justified? These stupid, unsaved fools who think that you have to repent of your sins, they're trying wow. to be justified by the works of the law, and they're going straight to hell. Okay? <laughs> so, so God, the servant of your sins, is trying to be justified by the works of the law. Sure, yeah, really. There's only one condition for salvation, and it's to believe on Christ. 
to simply trust Christ, turn over to Acts chapter 16. I'm sick of this garbage. Of course, of course Acts 16. Always have to go to Acts 16.31. Acts 16.31. Acts 16.31. They never read the context of what's going on. Because the context shows repentance. I showed that in my other video, how it's easy to believe as in heretics. And yes, I am saying heretics because they're, they're teaching a false sense of salvation, and teaching a false gospel, void of any godly sorrow. Okay, they rip Acts 16.31 all the time. They take it totally out of context. Okay, read it in context. The Philippian jailer was going to kill himself. He's trembling. Okay, he's in a repentant state. He has godly sorrow. Okay, they won't read the context. They just go to verse 30 and 31. Typical of all these guys. Always easy to believe as in false prophets. These stupid retards, these stupid reprobates, these hellbound bastards, they're going straight to hell, mocking the only condition for salvation, mocking faith, calling it easy believism. Hey, you're going to hellism is what you believe, you stupid damnable heretics. Okay? Repenting of your sins now, okay. for us. I will point out, salvation is easy, okay? That's why I, I kind of don't like using the term easy believism, because salvation is easy, okay? I only use that term just so people know what I'm talking about, okay? When I'm saying easy believism, yes, salvation is easy, okay? Romans chapter 5, verses 15 to 18, and Romans 3.24 are clear that God's grace is a free gift, okay? Which is what the Lordship Salvation heretics reject, okay? The conditional security heretics reject that. The sinless perfection heretics reject that, Okay? Grace is a free gift, okay? So, yes, salvation is easy, but when I say easy believism, I'm referring to the people like this who just flat out say no repentance, no godly sorrow, just intellectual belief, okay? That's a heresy, okay? That's what I mean when I say easy believism, because salvation is easy. I don't deny that. But they're teaching a false gospel, these easy believism people. A stupid reprobate who has not trusted in Christ, who is trusting in their self, and they can just, you know, just drop into hell when they die. And that's exactly where they're going. And these people are choosing hell over the simple plan of salvation, which is to believe on Christ. Acts chapter 16, let's take a look at a couple verses here. It reads in verse uh, 29, Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, yeah, he was Yeah, the Philippian jailer was trembling. He was in a repentant state. So there was no need to preach repentance to him, because he was already in that state. But again, Jack Smack won't tell his viewers that. He can't see that. Ridiculous. What must I do to be saved? That is the question. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. No mention of the word repent. No mention of yeah, the word... Yeah, because he was already in a repentant state. That's why there's no mention of the word repent. And again, you don't just base it off one verse. You compare scripture with scripture. 1 Corinthians 2.13, comparing spiritual with spiritual. And again... What about John 3.16? This guy always says you have to go to John 3.16 and you can only use John 3.16. If you can't base it off solely John 3.16, you're teaching a false gospel. What are you doing not using John 3.16? His hypocrisy is showing. Repent of your sins because that's not a condition for salvation. You can repent of your sins after you're saved and be a disciple and start growing in grace and start growing in maturity. But that's not part of salvation. And anyone who thinks it is, is going straight to hell. They're going to burn forever with their father, Satan. Because they're a bunch of stupid, unsaved devils and bastards. That's what they are. Let them rot in hell. Okay, enough of that little demonic ranting. Ridiculous. Okay, so he just condemned Paul to hell. I'm going to show you that. So first or Second Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8 to 11. This is the verse that easy believers and heretics, especially the fending rights, don't like. For this, for though I made you sorry with the letter, I did not repent. Though I did repent, I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Verse 9. Now I rejoice that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance. For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive the damage by us in nothing. Verse 10. For a godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. What do you think repentance is not part of salvation? God is all repentance to salvation. To salvation. Okay, don't need to say it again. To salvation. Repentance to salvation is part of the gospel. Not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Verse 11. For behold, the same, the self same thing that you sorrowed, sorrowed after a godly sorrow, uh, what carefulness it wrought in you, what... Yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye are approved yourselves to be clear 
in this matter, which Jack Smack is not clear in this matter. God the soul worketh repentance to salvation. Luke chapter 18. Another one of these, these that easy believe us devils don't like. Luke 18 verses, starting at 9, there's 14. One of my favorite parables. And he, spake this, and he spake this parable under a certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous. Oh, I believe in Jesus. All it takes is my belief. I'm good. Trusting in themselves that they're righteous. You see, the easy believers and heretics, they're the ones who are self-righteous, along with the Lordship Salvation heretics like Jesse Morrell, Ruben Israel, Watchman D, all these guys. They're self-righteous too. Both sides are self-righteous, really. They're trusting in themselves the righteous. And look at this. And despised others calling people retards and devils and stupid and all this other stuff. Verse 10, two men went up in the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. Verse 11, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Look, he says, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I'm a good person. I believe in Jesus. You know, I fast, verse 12, I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Hey, when I was an easy believer and heretic, I did the same thing. I was self-righteous. Verse 13, And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much his eyes as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Uh, he was humble. He had God the sorrow for his sins. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Repentance. Verse 14, I tell this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. That simple. Some scripture on humbling yourself. Because that's what repentance is. You're just humbling yourself. You're realizing I'm not a good person. You know, in Matthew 15, Jesus calls a Canaanite woman a dog. Let me show you that scripture real quick, actually. Leaving no stone unturned, as usual. Don't like leaving any stone unturned. Uh, yeah, Matthew 15, 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidium. Verse 22, And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. Verse 23, But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not, verse 24, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, one more kick, I want to kick a false doctrine. The Lordship Salvation heretics like Jesse Morrell, uh, Reuben Israel, uh, Watchman D, they always like to revert back to the words of Jesus to be saved. Okay, But who is Jesus sent to? Verse 24, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the Jews. Okay, Jesus' earthly ministry was primarily to the Jewish people. Romans 15, 8 says that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision, Jews. Okay, So a lot of what Jesus said can be used for instruction in righteousness, but following the words of Jesus, the red letters won't save you. A lot of it won't save you because he was not speaking to Christians. Christians didn't exist during that time period. So, to your Lordship Salvation heretics out there, you're going to damn somebody to hell by telling them to go back under the parables and the Beatitudes and that kind of stuff. Those weren't written to Christians. Christians did not exist during the time of Jesus Christ. Verse 25, Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Look at verse 26. Look what Jesus says to her. Look what your loving, you know, hippie Jesus, who you think is some kind of hippie, says to her. Okay? Jesus was not a hippie. He was a bold, uh, he was a bold king, essentially. He, he is a bold, bold king. And he spoke the truth and didn't care if it hurt someone's feelings or not. Okay, Jesus Christ was not some effeminate little hippie as liberals seem to think. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take children's bread and to cast it to dogs. He just called her a dog. Look at her response. Verse 27, And she said, I am not a dog. I'm a good person. Look how good I am. Oh no, she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat up the crumbs which fall from the, their master's table. Look at verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She humbled herself. When Jesus called her a dog, truth, Lord. Here's the test for self-righteousness. And this goes for both the easy believers and people and the Lordship Salvation heretics. Here's the test for self-righteousness. If Jesus Christ were to come to you and say, you're a dog, you're a filthy, disgusting dog, what would you say to him? Would you say, I am not a dog. I'm a good person. Or would, you, or would you say, truth, Lord? I'll, I'd like to hear that answer, quite frankly. Because I, I guarantee a lot of these self-righteous, easy believers and lordship salvation heretics would argue with Jesus and say, I'm not, I, I'm a good person. Because Revelation 15, 4 
it's clear that God is the only one that's holy. Okay? Revelation 15.4, let me show you that one. Sorry, I'm going off a little rabbit trail because this makes me really angry. This this no, no godly sorrow, this, this prideful type thing. Revelation 15.4, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. Okay? God's the only one that is holy. Another good scripture on that is, I think it's in the uh, references down here somewhere. It's, uh, I'm trying to find it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? It's, uh, I think it's uh, 2 Samuel. Yeah, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 2. I just finally remember where it was. 1 Samuel, where is it? 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 2. There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside thee. There is neither any rock like our God. There's none holy just like, there's none holy like God. Okay, God's the only one that is holy. 1 Samuel 2, 2. Okay, but on the thing of being humble, okay? Humble. What does it mean to humble yourself? Because Jack Smack 7, 7 is just prideful, very evident. Okay, God the sorrow. Keep it in mind, God the sorrow for your sins. 2 Corinthians uh, 7, 8 to 11. Uh, for James 4, 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. When you come to God proud, oh, I'm a good person, just like the Pharisee did in Luke 18, 9 to 14, God's going to resist you. God resisteth the proud, but give grace to the humble. Okay? You humble yourself before God, he'll give you his grace. Yeah, God, you know, you're a filthy dog. Truth, Lord. Matthew 15. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to the elder. Yea, all of you, be subject one, one to another, and be clothed in humility. Humi humility, something Jack Schmack is not clothed in. He's not clothed in humility. For God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. That's simple. Okay, God resists the proud, give grace to the humble. So, repentance is not stopping your sin, as Jack Schmack lied to his viewers. Okay, repenting is you come to God in godly sorrow for your sins, and you put your faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that he is the only way you can be saved, not yourself. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. So I wanted to show you guys that. Just refute this false doctrine of Jack Smack 7, 7. To hit just rabid attacks on biblical repentance. Just wicked. So don't be deceived by Jack Smack 7, 7. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.